Hello all, welcome to Deep Dive. I am your host, Alan. Today, we will be talking to the author and Virgin Galactic employee, Loretta Whitesides. It's been a long time since I last saw you. I think I, I at least think I saw you at uh, Future Talks 2018. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were talking, I don't, honestly, I don't remember what it was about, but you were there. I don't either, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, all right. Now, <laughs> this podcast is, well, it's it's about space and technology primarily. And by that, we both have at least some form of interest in space. Now, what is it that fascinates you about space? I think when I was about your age, I was, uh, you know, it was the 80s, is the 1980s. <laughs> um sorry um and we we were we had a lot you know the news was always it was filled with different things to be stressed out about than we have now yeah. a whole different slew we were worried in those days we were worried about acid rain um we were worried about saving the whales everyone thought the whales were going extinct uh and we were worried about the ozone hole there's a hole in the ozone over australia and this was a big problem and i was like oh my gosh yeah. so many all these big problems intractable how do we deal with all this and um i got overwhelmed and scared and uh i thought i'd always been interested in space since i was like six years old like that's been my thing since i was a little girl i've been one i've known i didn't even want to be an astronaut because i was like everyone's gonna have rockets in their own garages we won't even need to be astronauts <laughs> when i grow up obviously the future is cra- you know crazy big um yeah. i was a little ahead a little ahead of my time um so when i was thinking about all these problems i i started to think that maybe space could be the way to to solve all of them at once because i couldn't figure out which problem i wanted to work on was i going to save the whales was i going to fix the acid rain or was i going to fix the ozone hole i was like ah, where do i go what do i do and i decided yeah. that i wanted to take my love of space and go in that direction because i saw that if we did that if we went to space that we could you know create these model cities you know, out there and, and learn how to recycle all our air and water and learn how to work together and learn how to respect each other. And, and by doing these really hard things, we could learn how to um, take care of ourselves, take care of each other and take care of our whole, our home planet. And I thought, okay, that that sounds like the way that I could best contribute to the, to our future, our species is by um, giving us these, these big, bigger picture tools. Yeah, so so you you essentially channeled channeled your intellect and and passion into the goodness of bettering humanity. Yeah, that's always been yeah. my driver. I mean, it it worked out. You're working at Virgin Galactic. I mean, how cool is that? Like one of the leaders in the commercial space travel industry. <laughs> like yeah. how 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 did you get there? Like how <laughs> <laughs> it, it is very cool to be at Virgin Galactic. I really love um what R- richard branson has created there and getting to be part of his vision because he's such a a great role model i love working for somebody that i can look up to and that i can learn from i mean i've hung yeah. out with him at different events and just seeing how he how he's fully present with people and the, the soft touch he has and the difference he makes in conversations um and just changes people's lives they're like oh my gosh richard branson told me to stop smoking i i've, I've got to stop smoking you know it's like <laughs> You know, and he's got such a commitment in his work and the, with creating the ocean elders and the, and the elders, <laughs> the elders for the whole planet and the carbon yeah. war room and, and the business, you know, the rethinking the way business is done and just all the incredible projects he's starting around the world to, to help humanity. So he's a great role model for me as somebody who wants to help. Yeah, him. I feel like he, he is a great role model for just people in general, uh, especially those that are interested in business and space. Uh or aviation, or hyperloops, or a lot of <laughs> other things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, he's just a general, general great guy from what I've heard, at least. And he is a role model for me, at least. And so is uh, the likes of Elon Musk, uh, and well, mostly them too. <laughs> yeah, now, I've at least heard that you've uh, experienced weightlessness before. Yeah. Uh, or at least a lot of time or a couple times. Uh, hey. Yeah. No. <laughs> now, I, w- I want to know how that feels because a lot of people just say it fe- you feel weightless, but that doesn't explain <laughs> a lot. 
it's like it's just like weightlessness uh yeah <laughs> if you haven't done it yeah so it's more so obviously the closest we have is the pool because in the pool you can you know be upside down and 360 and move any way you want um yeah. the difference is well a the blood doesn't rest your head when you're upside down because there's no gravity pulling the blood um yeah. you can't push on anything so people try to swim in the air but the air so you get a push enough air to move so you're just sort of flapping and not going anywhere um you can stand on the ceiling of the airplane and that's sort of hard to can't really do that so much you can stand on the surface of the water i guess um but also like the things float around you so like you could throw an m&m or you could release a, bu a bubble of water and it makes a perfect spear and you can eat the water out of the air and those are things you can't do in the pool but anyway but what i think about it is it's it's totally exotic um it will, oh no sorry I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it the other way it's totally familiar it feels like the womb it feels like coming home you get into weightlessness and you're like oh my god i belong here this is where i'm from like i should be here all the time this is this is perfect i love this i feel perfectly at home here. this is amazing i i was born for this like this it's that coming home feeling i love that and at the exact same time it's also completely exotic and foreign and otherworldly and like your brain you know like if you look at a two-year-old or a three-year-old they're still trying to figure out how stuff works right you know they're still yeah. like yeah and their brain is you know learning that if you roll the pen it falls off the table and you're like oh look at that and it's yeah. you know it's the physics engines being built you know that you're learning your intuition of movement and and engaging with reality but in the yeah. plane when we're weightless in the parabola, all that goes out the window. All your three-year-old training is wrong. And suddenly, like, the things are just floating. And so this plane full of adults turns into a plane full of children. Because our physics engine isn't, isn't adequate to describe the So everyone's like, wait, what's going on? And they're like, you're totally present. I think that's the other magic about it. Adults are always stressing about the future or fretting, upset about the past. And there, we don't spend, adults aren't good at spending a lot of time in the present and just being like kids, like fully immersed in play and just totally right here, just having a great time. And yeah. because it's so foreign, all us adults are like, what is happening? This is amazing. <laughs> and so we're totally present in the moment. So not only are we learning like kids, but we're present and having fun in the moment like kids. And it's just amazing to see 38 adults floating around this plane, just giggling <laughs> and having the best time. So it's like playing with Legos for the, for the first time. You just it, it's the ability to explore something you 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 feel is right but you've never experienced before. Yeah. In essence. Yeah. It's magical. I really <laughs> that, that sounds Yeah. Yeah, that sounds wonderful actually. I I want to try that soon. Uh <laughs> Yeah. Uh and online it says your job is founder astronaut. Could you elaborate on what that means? So uh, that means I bought a ticket to fly with Virgin Galactic. Uh, my husband and I both bought tickets in 2005. And fa founder astronaut um, means that we were one of the first 100 people to do so. So oh. Virgin Galactic has been telling, selling tickets for 17 years and we bought our ticket in the first six months. So we were founder astronauts <laughs> because... We, we did it very early on. And what that means is that we'll be um, on the, one of the very first flights, the commercial flights that Virgin Galactic will start doing the end of this year or, or early next year. So 2022 yeah. or 23. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they've they got the, they did two flights, if I remember correctly. Uh, one with Branson on it himself, where he had, he had the beautiful heart uh, heartfelt speech. Yeah. And, what, what, how excited are you to go on that trip? I mean, it, like, in my mind, it seems super exciting, but I also don't have a ticket, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm super excited. I mean, I was, I was super excited when I bought it in 2005, and I'm super ex even more excited now because it's, it's, um, it's closer to becoming reality. And, you know, we, we, I got to be there in New, Me New Mexico last July to see Richard, to be there for Richard's flight and see that, and that was magical. Um, and I'm just really looking forward to, to, yeah, to being up there myself and looking down on our world and being able to come back and share that with as many people as I can. Yeah. Well, I, I'm excited for you that, that it just seems completely wonderful. Uh, and, um, 
Now, uh, Virgin Galactic is, like I said earlier, one of the leaders in the commercial travel, the space travel industry. Uh, and right now, it's kind of on its, it, it's kind of using its training wheels, where commercial space travel is really only going into space for a couple minutes and then coming back down. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but how, how do you see that progressing in the next like five to 10 years? Yeah, it's it's an exciting time right now, Alvin. It's amazing. We had, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I should have turned that off. Reminder. <laughs> no, you're on an interview. Anyway, um, we had, the commercial space industry sent like 22 non-government astronauts to space last year. Uh, yeah. Which is astound, a, a staggering number. Even I would not have predicted that. I mean, there are people who flew to the International Space Station in the early 2000s, um, yeah. but only about eight people did that. So eight non-government astronauts had flown to space before, maybe more. I, I guess if you count some, there's a couple others like Helen Sherman and stuff. But um, yeah, but 22 last year, and it's you know it's going to be going up from there and. Orbit and Virgin, and so yeah, you'll see SpaceX flying more orbital people. We have the Axioms flying their first crew, um, I think in March, and you know it's going to go from there. So yeah, you'll see a lot more orbital flights. You're going to see Starship. They're going to be doing an orbital test flight of Starship. This year. yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about that. I saw uh, actually today uh, they finally stacked it again. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, that, yeah, that was super exciting. That tweet. Um, and I mean, it, this blows my mind. If you think about Starship, it can seat a hundred people. A hundred like, people to space. Like that is just yeah. game changing. Like that has just not been on the map in my lifetime. I mean, it's science fiction <laughs> maybe, but that's a big deal to start having that capability as a species where we can send a hundred people to space at a time. Is yeah. game changing. So yeah, you'll start to see um, Blue Origin will start taking off. Um, they want to, they're doing their orbital reef space station a private space station um and they're working on their orbital vehicle as well yeah. and their goal is to put a, a million people living and working in space and elon's goal is to you know put you know i don't yeah, i don't know if he's a number but lots of people yeah. living on mars <laughs> at least a couple thousand <laughs> yeah, thousands of people living on mars and you yeah. know we'll have the point-to-point -point transportation where you can get anywhere in the world in less than an hour uh and it's 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 good i the world will be unrecognizable when I'm 90 years old. And I, but, but here's the thing I want to say. When I was your age, it was before the turn of the millennium, right? It was before 2000. Yeah. And we were, you know, we were really wide-eyed about the future. Like, oh, it's going to be great. Um, it's not that change. That's changed a little bit now. We're a little more tempted. Like, well, we're not sure yeah. if the future's going to be great. Let's see. But what I want to say to people, what I would love to help get you to get the message out is it's up to us. Like the, the future will be extraordinary because we make it so. It, it's not a given. It's not an automatic. It's not just time. To, things just get better over time. Things get better because people like us care and throw our heart into something and make it so. The way the way Elon has, the way Richard has. Um, and that's what makes change. That's what makes things possible. It's not time. It's effort. And vision. Yeah. And teamwork. Yeah, I, I guess... <laughs> I guess people say, uh, there, there's a common saying that goes, uh, we were born too late to explore the earth, but too early to explore space. I feel like at this point in time, that's not completely true anymore. We are, we're getting to a point where in only a couple tens of years, humans will be on Mars. Yeah. And like that, that is mind blowing to me that it, we went from uh, going to the moon never coming back for tens for decades yes then just having a space station and then going to mars after a couple random guys that most people had never heard of before decided let's start a company <laughs> what are your thoughts on that <laughs> like <laughs> yeah it is i think actually i think it's an amazing time to be born i think we were born at the perfect time yeah. i think this is an extraordinary moment for humanity um and and sometimes I wonder, like, why are we all working on space? You know, shouldn't we all be working on climate change? <laughs> what are we doing? Maybe we have the wrong <laughs> idea. And I realized that what I love about my community, what I love about people who work in space exploration, because for one, it's not a job, it's a calling. We are drawn, we are passionate, we are committed to this. We're, and it's a beautiful thing is it makes a strong community, strong knit community with a lot of 
trust, which I think is really important for team formation. And so we have that bond. Um, we're, we, we, you know, you're a spacer too. Okay. You're, you're one of our tribe and that, that helps a lot. And <laughs> the other thing I think that we have that's going to be really valuable for our species and for our planet is those of us who are drawn to space. We think on a hundred year time scales, just naturally. That's just how we think, engage with life. And we think on a planetary time scale or a, a solar system or a galactic <laughs> time scale or a galactic yeah. scale. And the, that's also really valuable for climate change because if you can think on a hundred year time scale and you can think on a planetary scale, you can think about solutions and you can do the work that we need to make our, our systems work. And that's, yeah. I think, the, the mindset. You, know, you can't solve a problem with, from the same thinking that created the problems. We need this <laughs> new kind of thinking, this bigger thinking that I think is going to be really critical to our, our are navigating these challenges we have right now. It's an exciting yeah. time we're born in. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I did have a question that that uh, asked how your book, The New Right Stuff, um, uh, you like how space, how you use space to better yourself. But I feel like what you've just said kind of answered that automatically. <laughs> like, yes, and, uh, I was looking around for a copy of the book. I don't have one within arm's reach. Um, <laughs> And I, what I also love is that people are so dead. Those of us who are called the space, we're so dedicated to it that you can use that passion to be like, okay, you want to go to Mars? It's going to take some hard work. Are you willing to go and apologize to somebody who you've wronged and clean up your past and clean up your relationships? Because that's what it's going to take to level up as a species. And so yeah. I asked, I, in the book, I, I demand of people to do things that they've been putting off, things that scare them, things that they don't want to do or face of their dark side or of their past or, you know, the final challenge is to, you know, upgrade your relationship with your parents. Because if you think about it, yeah. and anyway, so the, yeah, there's lots of ways <laughs> that um, I, I think we can use um, the space perspective or our passion for space to help us do the hard work to be the, the, the hero, the space hero we've always wanted to be or the person you've always, leader you've always wanted to be. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I feel like um, uh, just the the inspiration for mission was a great show of that hard work that had to be put in to uh, to uh, well yeah elevate yourself in terms of space. Where uh, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember the the name, but the cancer survivor that Haley, went up, Arsenal. Haley. Haley, yeah, Haley, yeah, she had to also climb a mountain first, one of the tallest mountains in America. And she did it. Yes. Whilst having, having had surgeries in her leg and struggling the entire time, but she still did it. And I, I just find that beautiful. Just in general, it's. I mean, yeah, I find, <laughs> I find the entirety of of the the space movement beautiful. As I mean, it is. Yeah, it is a second space race that people, uh, that that people are beginning to more and more follow, and much like you and I, we we both have a passion for space. And I feel like that's going to be a growing movement in the future as well. Yeah, I hope so. It's an exciting yeah, I, time. And yeah, I hope people yeah. will get inspiration from Haley and, and the inspiration for mission. That's what it was for. To, yeah. To, to as well as you do more I'll, than you think you can too. Yeah. And, and they raised a lot, like a lot, a lot of money for charity, for St. Jude's Children's Hospital as well. Yeah. Over two hundred million dollars for kids with cancer. Yeah, like th that's an unheard of number. Yeah, like yeah, they had to do something unheard of to get something else unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it takes. Well, uh, yeah. Well, uh, my, my last question is: What were your dreams and aspirations around my age? Mm. And do you have any um, any uh, tips to anyone uh, in the teenage years that? you feel might be struggling with something or need something. Mm, that's great. Um, my usual, what I like to encourage young people to do is to dream big. Um, not because getting a gold medal or the Nobel prize or something will make you happy because it won't. You have to be happy. There are plenty of people who, you know, Buzz Aldrin was depressed when he got back from the moon. Achieving yeah. something big won't fix, won't make you love yourself. You have to do that first before you do something big. But the, the 
reason to have a big goal is to pull you forward through the tough times. Um, be like, uh, this is hard today, but um, I'm in it for something bigger than me, and it's worth it to persevere. So that's how that's helpful. Um, and then to ask for help. That was the thing I was not good at at your age. I was very <laughs> smart, and I could get a, I could get a, I could get, get a lot done with, without a lot of effort. And so I could sort of slide by, and I didn't need to, I didn't need people's help to get stuff done because I could just do it myself. But as you yeah. start doing bigger, bigger things, um, bigger, bigger projects, you're going to need a bigger team. I mean, it took four hundred thousand people to land uh, a spaceship on the moon. So if you want to do big things, it takes big teams. You have to start learning how to work with others and get other people inspired in your in your idea. And like, okay, come help me. Come be a part of this. Come come be on my on my come be interviewed on my vlog. You know, come, come help <laughs> me do this litter clean up in the park. Come help me launch this amateur rocket. Come fun. Anyway, you get it. So you got to ask for help. Yeah, yeah. And then never give up. Um, and also ask for help emotionally. We don't have a lot of good tools in our culture yet. Um, to help us like deal with our emotions and like when we're sad, when we're angry, when we're frustrated, when we're depressed, when we're anxious, you know, we don't, we don't have good habits yet for how to like clear that out. And you know, when your grandmother dies, like how do you like confront that? Anyway, so asking for help, like working through those things and, 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 sh and talking through those things so you can process it and, and transmute each of those, each of those, emotions it has a lot of power and energy to it and if you do the work and talk through it with somebody and and, and you can actually um transform each of those into energy or love or hope or joy they all have a a flip side to them and those are yeah. those can power your life and so that that's a really neat thing to play with um so yeah asking for help and we, yeah when you feel down get help we got to get better at like <laughs> Oh, I'm fine. I don't know what you're talking about. Everything's fine. You know, that's what our normal, or at least in the U.S., that's the default, and it's 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 deadly. Yeah, um, so. I think it's like that for a lot of uh, a lot of countries around the world. And uh, yeah, th those are some really good work <laughs> or some really good tips, just in general. I f I feel like everyone, like not just teenagers, but everyone in general, should should learn to apply that a bit more. It it, it is something that. It, like asking for help is something that people just generally don't want to do anymore, mm -hmm. which I I, kind, I personally find kind of sad. But I feel like if there's at least anything people take out of this, I feel like it should be that. Just yeah, asking for help. Your mess is your message. I heard one. I thought that was hilarious. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, all the things we struggle with, or you know, you know, people, homelessness or child abuse, you know, being abused as a kid or bad breakups, like any of those struggles we have, self-doubt, imposter syndrome, I love to talk about. <laughs> we, we can, as you work through that and like come to peace with them, you can also sh you start sharing about it. And then you help other people yeah. who are in it, in it at that moment. You're like, oh yeah, I was there. I, I was, I'm, I feel you. And there's a way out. And, and that, that helps you heal. That helps them heal. And it, it lifts everybody up. Yeah. Well, uh, I think we'll leave it at those inspiring words. <laughs> Loretta, thank you very much for uh, for coming on my uh, on my uh, podcast video thing. It was great seeing you again. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Alvin. Good luck. This is fun.